This is the first video in a series I'm calling Product 101. In these videos, I'm going to teach different skills or concepts as it relates to product management based on my six years of experience in the role. For this first video, I'm going to focus on analytics. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Anthony and I'm currently a senior product manager based out of New York City. I make videos about product management, tech, and personal growth in general. Let's get started and dive into analytics. First, I wanted to define the role of a product manager within a company. In a world where you can really spend time building anything and everything, the PM is focused on making sure the team is building the right things to grow the business. How do you grow a business? Well, there are really several different levers that you can pull. You can acquire more customers, you can raise your prices by offering more value, you can increase your retention rates so your customer's lifetime value increases, you could decrease costs associated with actually running and delivering your product to increase profit. Within each of those broad categories, there are dozens or hundreds of things that you could do. For example, within just the category of increasing retention rates, you could fix critical bugs that cause your customers to churn. You could offer incentives to retain clients when they're about to unsubscribe, like 20% off the next three months. You could offer different subscription tiers that fit your customers' needs better because some revenue is better than no revenue. So to step back, you don't have unlimited time or unlimited engineering resources. As the PM, you have to pick and choose the projects that you believe will have the highest return on investment for your company. So how do you decide what to actually work on with your team? One of the most valuable tools in your toolkit as a product manager to make this decision is data. Within the world of data, you may hear three different words, data, metrics, and analytics. I wanted to briefly define these so you understand the difference. Data refers to the raw information tracked from your product. For example, the raw order information for an e-commerce store. You could have order number one, the product is a navy fleece, the size is medium, the price per unit is 150, the quantity is two, and the total revenue for the order is 300, and so on with more orders. Metrics refers to measurements of the raw data. So for example, you could have a metric called average sales per day, which takes the total number of orders in a period and divides it by the number of days in that period. In this e-commerce example, you could have had 1,455 orders in the last 10 days. The average sales per day would equate to 145.5 orders. A product manager may track several other metrics like average order value, average quantity per order, etc. Finally, we have analytics. Analytics is really the process and technique of transforming data and metrics into insights for decision making. A product manager may see that the average order value has been slowly decreasing over time, which is ultimately hurting the business. They may start an investigation to understand why it's decreasing in the first place and then brainstorm solutions to the problem. You may be asking yourself, how do product managers even identify that a metric like average order value is decreasing over time? Well, they work with their teams to set up dashboards where they can track certain metrics on an hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly basis. They can then set up alerts based on these dashboards, or they can send themselves the reports every day or every week. So imagine you're the PM of an e-commerce platform. You may set up a weekly report that's sent to your inbox every Monday morning. You can see the average sales per day, average order value, average quantity, and how these metrics are actually changing on a week by week basis. Okay, so now that you have an understanding of data, metrics, and analytics, Let's dive into how data is actually tracked at a granular level. Tracking data is the foundation for everything that follows. So it's important you understand how it actually works in the real world. So there's really two parts to this. There are analytics events, and then there's metadata associated with each analytics event. This metadata is sometimes called an event attribute. An event is triggered when a user does something in the product. They could view something, tap on something, submit a form, watch something, purchase something, etc. And when anything happens, an event is tracked and sent to the analytics platform in the background. So let's take Spotify as an example. When a user lands on an artist's page, Spotify would track an event called User Views Artist. As mentioned, that event will have different attributes. For example, you may track artist ID, which is the unique identifier for the artist whose profile is being viewed. You may track the origin, which is the last page the user visited before arriving at that artist's profile. You could track the genre of the artist, etc. Then when a user goes to play a song, Spotify would track user plays song. 
That event would have attributes like the song ID, the song length in seconds, the album ID of the song, etc. Then, after 20 seconds, the user may pause the song and Spotify would track user pauses song. Then, they may go back to the artist page and it would track user views artist once again. Then they finally tap on an album and it sends user views album. All these events put together would create a stream of events for that particular user. The product manager can then do things with these events. They could first look at the user level and see that user ID 12345 did all these events in this order. Or they could create a chart that looks at all the users that played songs. Then they would create a funnel that starts with user views artists. Then they would add user plays song. The product manager would say, you know, I want to keep the artist ID the same between these two events. Then they would say, okay, I want to look at this in a five minute time frame. The resulting funnel may look like this. You have 3 million users who view artists, and of those 3 million users, 800,000 actually play a song by them within five minutes. That's a 26.6% play rate. So then the product manager may investigate more. Does that differ by the genre of the artist? Maybe they would see that for pop artists, the play rate is 40%, whereas for the alternative genre, it's only 15%. They may also segment it out by device type. So they may see that on average, it's 30% for mobile users, but only 22% for desktop users. The PM and their data analysts will perform investigations like this to identify opportunities for product improvements. They may understand from other research or other features that the team has built and launched that the higher the play rate, the higher the upgrade rate is to their premium version. They may then decide to work on features and functionality focused on increasing the play rate where it's lower, like on desktop, for example. Analytics is not only helpful during the planning phase of a project, but it's also extremely important when deciding whether or not to turn on a new feature. The product manager will typically test the feature with a subset of users. In the case of Spotify, the PM may have the team test a new feature with just 10% of Spotify's user base. If it performs well and actually increases the metric that they're trying to move, then they would roll it out to the remaining 90%. But if it decreases the metric or the metric stays the same, they'll try to figure out why. They may iterate on it or move on to a new idea. Every experiment takes time to run, so the team will always want to work on experiments they have strong conviction will actually move the core metric that they're trying to move. In future Product 101 lessons, I'll go into how product managers run these experiments, the tools that they use to perform analyses, and common metrics that they track, and more. But hopefully you found this first lesson helpful to understand the basics of analytics and tracking user data. By the way, if you'd like to take my full course on the PM Career Acceleration Method that I've developed to stand out in the competitive PM application process and LAN offers, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.